An Australian state, New South Wales, is threatening to find businesses $5,000 for serving unvaccinated customers. I'm going to look at whether or not there's any justification for this and exactly what implications this is going to have for businesses. And in short, there are some significant problems with it. And I have rather large misgivings about finding businesses for this type of thing. If you have any thoughts about this, definitely do let me know that in the comments below. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with some basic reporting about what exactly is happening here. The New South Wales government has confirmed that businesses will be fined $5,000 if they fail to stop unvaccinated customers from entering their venues when COVID-19 restrictions ease next week, i.e. ease from October 11 onwards. So in New South Wales, on October 11, yeah, venues will be able to serve more customers. So vaccinated people will be able to go into restaurants and the like and go into shops and various other premises like gyms. Unvaccinated people, however, are not labeled, enabled to do so. And unvaccinated people might only be able to do so from the 1st of December. So it says here, Health Minister Brad Hazard outlined the new penalties in, statements, in a statement on Sunday, stating that businesses will be responsible for taking reasonable measures to stop unvaccinated people from entering the premises. This obviously begs the question of what are reasonable measures, because that is a rather vague term. It would really depend on what a court ultimately determined was reasonable or not. They're asserting here that reasonable measures include having signs explaining the entry requirements, Service New South Wales QR codes, unstaffed checking vaccination status, and only accepting valid forms of evidence. Now, there's a few things we need to unpackage here. These are examples of reasonable measures. However, it does appear to largely cover the field in terms of what companies might do. So they have a few examples of reasonable measures here. It's not totally clear whether one would need to do all of these for it to qualify as reasonable. The reason I say that is signs could easily be ignored. Customers could probably just walk past a sign. As sign is not magical, people often ignore signs. How often have you seen people jaywalking? It's pretty common. A sign is probably not going to achieve very much. QR codes at the moment are also unlikely to achieve very much because at the time of recording, New South Wales' QR codes have not in any way recorded any evidence about being vaccinated. As a result, the QR codes are fine if you're checking in for COVID contact tracing, but they aren't recording vaccination status. Part of the reason for that is by design. The QR codes are supposed to be somewhat anonymized, at least siloed in terms of the information that is being provided, so that only specific people have access to that information, i.e. so that police don't get carte blanche being able to track you. This does create some data privacy issues with respect to how QR codes are functioning if vaccination passports are being brought in. And at the moment, Australia does not have a vaccination passport. You get evidence of vaccination when you are vaccinated, and this can be linked up to your Medicare, which is effectively uh, the government's sponsored medical system. And one can get a certificate of this from the government. But there is no vaccination passport per se, in the sense of there being some form of electronic passport. Then continuing on, it says, announcing the penalties, Hazard said increasing vaccination rates will allow the government to continue easing restrictions as New South Wales opens up. They also say that businesses are likely to be monitored. The New South Wales government has announced new fines one week ahead of tough COVID-19 restrictions easing next Monday, on October 11, when 70% of the eligible population will be fully vaccinated. Officers will monitor businesses that reopen on October 11, and will focus on those with vaccination requirements, such as hospitality, retail, gyms, hairdressers, and beauty salons. Authorised officers can issue on-the-spot fines of $5,000 to businesses that don't comply with the vaccination requirements. High fines may apply for businesses that seriously breach public health orders. This does create an issue, of course, in that they need to look at whether businesses comply. But ordinarily, in the ordinary course of things, a government official can't walk into a beauty salon and say, give me your ID. There is no power at the moment for one to be able to demand the ID of someone doing something purely legal, like sitting in a beauty salon, getting a haircut, going to a gym. Government officials cannot and should not have the right to go in and ask customers for their ID, let alone any other personal information. If 
officials can do this, that goes a step beyond what would otherwise be required. So I sincerely hope that these spot checks are simply the government asking management going in and seeing whether management checks vaccination status, rather than behaving like Jack Booth and Stasi and going around and asking everyone what their ID is when they are doing otherwise legal activities, such as getting a haircut. That would be rather pernicious to allow the government to go in and demand ID in that circumstance. Individuals face on-the-spot fines of $1,000 if they don't comply with the vaccination requirements, including using fake evidence of a vaccination. Now, one would hope that for the police to be able to issue that fine, they would need a reasonable belief that the person is not vaccinated. It should not be that the government can simply ask ID at all times or ask and receive vaccination ID at all times. That, of course, appears to be a violation of individuals' privacy. Now, businesses have apparently braced for pushback from customers, unsurprisingly. Despite the restrictions easing next, when, next Monday, businesses in New South Wales remain concerned about how to enforce vaccination passports. The Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry has urged the government to clarify how businesses will be expected to police vaccination passports on behalf of its members. Andrew McKellar, the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry executive, said leaving commercial venues to check vaccination status without clear guidelines is placing the burden on small businesses, i.e. asking them to go out and force people to give over their ID and vaccination status. The lack of clarity is particularly stressful for small and medium businesses who don't have the resources to navigate complex privacy and discrimination laws. Workers are equally concerned about how they will enforce vaccination requirements on the job. Crime data analyzed by the McKill Institute for the country's peak retail and fast food union shows harassment of retail and wholesale premises in New South Wales increased 22% before, since before the pandemic. The Shop Distributive and Allied Employees Association, which represents 200,000 workers, expects retail workers will experience a, spine, a spike in incidents of harassment when vaccination requirements kick in. According to the research, the local government areas of Campbelltown, Sydney and Blacktown have recorded significantly higher increases in harassment offences in and around shops compared to the state's average. Campbelltown experienced the largest increase in offences with the number of incidents of intimidation, stalking, and harassment in shops rising 78% when compared with 2018 to 2020, 2021. The McKell Institute forecasts that these inc incidents will continue to rise as these restrictions ease. Bernie Smith, the SDA New South Wales Secretary, said the union is urging the government to improve protections for shop workers, including specific provisions in health orders and legislation for bigger penalties for abusing retail employees. It is not the responsibility of retail workers as restrictions are lifted to enforce shopper compliance with government regulations and like. As the economy opens up and we head toward the Christmas shopping crush, we need to respect and protect the essential retail workers. So that's effectively what appears to be proposed in New South Wales. I, the government appears to propose to fine businesses $5,000 for failing to stop unvaccinated people going into the premises and individuals $1,000 for themselves violating the vaccination requirements. There are, however, issues in terms of how this will be enforced and how civil liberties are maintained. For example, how is it the businesses are supposed to enforce this? What exact measures are required to avoid a fine here? And are businesses expected to get personal information about vaccination status and ID and the like from all of their customers? Furthermore, when this is being enforced, do the police or other regulators have the authority to demand ID? The concern here is not so much about police, because police, by and large, at least in New South Wales, are quite reasonable. The concern is about non-police authorities being ha having these powers, i.e. an individual who is not a law enforcement officer being able to demand someone's personal information. That's a pernicious, slippery slope. Rather, the power to demand information like that should be heavily curtailed and significantly restricted and only given out to those that are in a position of authority where they have justified the need for that, i.e. law enforcement officials rather than general administrators. Because it is, like I've said, a slippery slope. Otherwise, if any random administrator can go and demand your ID. So it needs to be strictly circumscribed. I would also assert, of course, 
and it should go without saying, that the idea that you'd have a Texas-style system where individuals could dob on other people and get a reward for doing so, a sue an unvaccinated person for going into a particular space. That, of course, is inherently repugnant, but that does not appear to be on the radar at all. Although I do suspect that they would allow for people to dob in other people, although I suspect that won't be a significant issue here. Furthermore, in addition to this, there's a normative question about whether businesses really should be having to go out of their way to enforce the government's requirements here. Businesses, to some extent, have a vested interest in doing this. For example, many people might be concerned about going to an area where there's a large number of unvaccinated people. So maybe shopping malls have an incentive to make sure that they're monitoring what is happening. However, it's not necessarily their job to go and enforce this type of thing. The government is effectively deputizing private business to enforce their own policies. Now, granted, the government is in a tricky situation. How does the government enforce this without having some other buy-in from the general public? So a question then becomes, how would the government enforce this otherwise? And the thing is, we don't really have a good way. Because let's face it, the police don't have the resources to go around and spot check people's IDs. It is super expensive to get the military to do it, even if you ignore the optics of having the military police private citizens. And that is a genuine concern. People don't want the military going around policing private citizens. So getting the military in is both A, super costly, but also B, raises optics issues. So there aren't really the personnel to be able to monitor this. This means you've really got a couple of options. You could have some form of vaccination passport that is tied up with a QR code, which people could then scan in order to get access to a shop. If they're really going to enforce vaccination requirements, that's the only viable way of doing this. Because getting retailers to monitor this by checking everyone's vaccination status is resource intensive, but also then imposes penalties upon the retailer. When in fact, the retailer is not doing something wrong per se, rather it's the individual that is otherwise doing it. So if one wants a vaccination mandate like this, the only real way to do it is to link up your vaccination status with the QR code check-ins that occur every time people need to check into an organization, and then it would determine whether someone's vaccinated and can enter or not. And then the person might get fined for entering otherwise, but the business would not be. Finding the business for not checking vaccination status is going to lead to those businesses potentially being abused, as many of the unions, but also business owners are saying. It also imposes significant costs and is potentially untenable. How does this business physically check the vaccination status of literally every shopper in a supermarket? That is completely inefficient and the resources wouldn't work out. So that would be my only solution if they want to do this. And I'm not saying that they should be doing it. I'm just saying that if they are going to, to my mind, that's the only practical way of doing it. And in any case, if you have any thoughts about how they can enforce such a requirement, I'd be interested to hear those in the comments below. And otherwise, of course, if you have any other thoughts about vaccination requirements, definitely let me know those as well. And otherwise, of course, it'd be great if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully I'll see you for future videos as well. Bye.